Good morning, everyone, and let there be light there where you are. You who find yourself in darkness, stay here together with us, because the point of this time that we are here together, it's to show to you, to prove to you that no matter how bad your situation is, the problem that you have, that you are facing, you can get out of that. You can overcome that. Perhaps you've been trying to overcome by your own means, by your own understanding, by your own knowledge. But one thing is certain that if you put your trust, if you manifest a little bit of faith, doesn't have to be big, but some faith in what the Word of God promises, I can assure to you that your life will never be the same anymore. In fact, that's what I want to talk and to bring up to you today. I have here, we have here a very powerful testimony. And you know that when we show to you testimonies, we, we often, we have many testimonies from the Bible. Peoples where they achieved miracles, life-changing, you know, uh, lives were transformed. But when we show to you today a testimony of nowadays, it's like we are opening the Bible to you. So I, I don't need necessarily to come here and open the Bible to tell you that Jesus healed the blind 2,000 years ago, that uh, the paralyzed walked, that the sick was healed because God is the same. God is, doesn't change. And I know what you are asking now. Perhaps you are wondering, okay, if God doesn't change, God is the same. Why am I suffering like this? Why am I going through this problem? Well, one thing is certain. It is not the will of God that you are in pain. It is not the will of God that you are struggling in your family, seeing your children, seeing your family dysfunctional, as in fights, arguments, division, addictions, and so on and so forth, that it is not the will of God. But I want to ask you a question, a direct question. What are you willing to do to change that situation of yours? No, I'm waiting for God to change. Negative. It is not God. What are you willing to do to change that situation? God, He will help. But you understand that the testimonies inclusive, what the Word of God says, the, the, the stories that we can read here, people, they had to do something. Somehow they had to call God's attention. So let me rephrase this. What are you willing to do to call God's attention to change that situation that you have. Well, before we get into that, think, we, think about that question that I've just made, and I want you to watch this powerful story, this testimony of faith. And again, here it shows to us one thing. God is the same. God, He does not change. Sit tight. Uh, put all distractions away. Let us watch this case story right now. My initial contact with the first fruits was my mum was attending the Universal Church. She'd been attending for about a year and I was addicted heavily at the time. I didn't attend the church and I wanted to feed my addiction. And as usual, I'd go into her bag, I'd steal her money and feed my addiction. But on this particular day, um, I found the envelope and it said, you know, first fruits and I looked at it. That day, taking the money was so much more difficult than any other day when I would go and take it. Somehow something connected about it. I took the money and I was able to, you know, buy my different drugs, marijuana, etc. Um, but that stayed with me. So obviously when my mum found out and she was trying to prepare her first fruits, she noticed that some of it wasn't there. Um, I was the only person in the home that would do something like that. My other sisters were not addicted. 
they were very obedient and good children, I was not. So she then came to speak to me and explained that it was something very important, very special, and that it's up to me, but she advises me to, you know, to make a prayer at the time and just ask God for forgiveness because it's something very serious. I remember kind of blurting something like, oh God, if you're there, blah, 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 you know, please forgive me. I didn't really mean it. And I left it. So before coming to the Universal Church, my life was really, really difficult. We had health problems. I had a lot of bumps all over my skin. The doctors didn't know what it was. No, nothing could cure it. We had a lot of problems in the family. I could not get on with my mum at all. Not even for one day, we fought every single day. And sometimes I would physically attack her. Um, I had problems with my siblings. I had problems with my school. Because of my addictions, I was a very, very aggressive person. We had a lot of curses in our family. I had problems sleeping. I couldn't sleep. Underneath my bed was like a bar. I had so much alcohol under my bed because I was trying to hide it from my mum. I would probably say the worst thing that I faced before coming to church, I'd say two things. I'd say the family problems, but also I'd say the financial problems. Because as a child, my mum couldn't afford to give us the best. So she would have to buy our clothes from the second hand shop. When we lived in Uganda before coming to England, sometimes we ate only one meal a day. So you grow up as a child wanting just the normal things. So when my mum started to attend the church, what I noticed was her calmness. I can't say to you that straight away I saw a change in our financial life, but there was a change in our home. It was just so calm of course, until I would come home and create lots of problems because I was still having my own problems. But my mum herself changed. And that's the reason I went to the Universal Church because I wanted to see what this place was doing to my mum. When I first understood the meaning of the first fruits is when I came to the church and I started to attend a bit more regularly. And in the beginning, to be sincere, I found it very, very hard. Like I explained, I didn't grow up with anything. So in a way, money was a God for me. So to hear that every time I would receive something, I would need to honour God with my first fruits, I thought, oh no, I will come to the church, I'll make my chains of prayer, I'll do all these other things, but this part of my life, is a no and I used to say God will understand and there was a bit of a struggle inside of me because I remember the pastor explaining it's like a marriage it's like you're trying to give God a gift through the campaign but actually you're unfaithful like a husband and wife and I thought oh and that was hard it was difficult but eventually I remember as my relationship with God was developing, I started to understand that it's important for me to use my faith. So I was going through a serious problem at university. Um, I'd been kicked out. And I remember one of the youths in the youth group saying, look, let's test God, you know, use your faith. I decided to return my first fruits the first time as an exchange, to be honest. I wanted to go back to university and finish my career. And to be sincere with you, it worked. And I think for a while as I was developing in my faith, that's how it was. I would want God to answer me as soon as I returned my first fruits on the altar, like that same day or that week. But as I developed with God, I understood it was much more than this. And for me, the real understanding happened when I received the Holy Spirit. Over the years, I've seen many things change since I started honouring God. I think I'd start with the biggest change for me because it was the change inside. Um, and I think even if I had acquired all the things I've acquired now physically without the change inside, it wouldn't have tasted as sweet and I don't know if I would have sustained it. And because of that, I've been able to establish a happy family. I've been able to establish a career. I've been able to bring my family members, my relatives through my testimony to God. I'm not addicted, I have peace and my financial life is totally, totally different. It wasn't overnight. You know, I remember a purpose I did in 2017 and I just got the answer in 2023. But through that whole time, I was still faithful. I was still honoring my God. Today, I'm a head teacher. I have a very, very good salary. You know, my family and I, we holiday. We buy what we want to buy. We live in a house where we want to live. We have this fulfilled life. But for me, the most important is the fact that I belong to him and I can honor him in that way. What amazing story. Isn't that so? So you see, like I said before, we show to you these testimonies and these testimonies shows one thing. People who are going through a certain struggle, a situation, but when they decided to give it, you know, a goal, 
to do something, to call God's attention. To do something different, to call God's attention towards their life. You see that God, He answers. God, He helps. God, He changes. Why is that? Because God doesn't change. People change, times change, but God is the same. His power is the same. Like, and so much so that we can even uh, read here uh, just an example. Look what the, the Word of God says regarding that. Here in the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 8. Read it there. I want you to read it there. It says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, comma, today, comma, and forever. So, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So, understand that when this was written, Jesus Christ, as it says, is the same yesterday. Yesterday because the Lord Jesus, He came in, He came on earth with a purpose. He served that purpose on earth. He died, he resurrected, and by the time that he already had resurrected, ascended to heaven, this was written there. So that's why it says it was the same yesterday. It's the same today that was almost 2,000 years ago, and it's forever. So you see, that's why the life of these people changed. The life of these people changed because of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is not because of religion. It is not because of church. It is not because of these, 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 and that. It is because that the Lord Jesus Christ, He is alive. And if you put your faith in Him, your life will change as well. But this is something that, as in, uh, let us say, in a standard, sometimes people, they confuse, they, they have a confusion in between doing that, that calls God's attention towards them. And the confusion that they make is between doing that and following some religious practices. My friend, we are not here today to talk about religion. So we are here to tell you the following. You can be the worst person on the face of the earth. Or perhaps people treat you like such. But if you put your faith in what this word says, your life can be transformed. No matter how bad your life is. And that's what we are promoting here today. And that's why our church opens every single day. The church is open every single day. And here we have dedicated meetings throughout the week to help you to overcome and to have this connection to the Father, to God, that can change that situation of yours. And again, you could see that this happened in the life of this person. And I want to share here this for you who find yourself hopeless. Yeah, but these people are different. That person was different. My problem is different. I'm not so certain if really can change. Well, then look what Jesus says to you, my friend. Look at me. Wake up. Wake up. Look at us now. Look at us. Look what Jesus says here for you. Pay attention. He said, behold. I make all things new. I mean, behold, I make all things new. Do you want to receive a new life? Do you want to receive a new life? All things new means you are, let us say, you are facing an addiction. Be addicted free. You are a person who known by sicknesses. Sickness free. You are a person that you are known of having disability in your family, confusion. New family. That's what Jesus is saying. Here, behold, I make all things new. Do you want that? Do you wish to receive a new life? Do you wish to come out of that situation that you find yourself of shame, of pain? Well, my friend, then run to him. Run to the Lord Jesus. And if you say, what do I have to do? Well, we are here to help you. So I invite you to come to one of our services. Specifically, I'm inviting you to come. This Sunday already. Because Sunday, we are going to be doing here something very special at the church. 
a powerful meeting. It's a gathering of faith, the gathering of faith. But if you say, I cannot wait for Sunday, then you can come today already. Come today. Talk to one of the pastors. We are here, like I said, every single day. You can see the location there on your screen. And we are here to help you. Because one day, we also need that help. And God, He was able to help us. And we believe that God can change that situation of yours. Because when the Spirit of God, He comes and He enters in you, everything changes in your life. Everything changes in your life. You become more than overcomer. And again, God wants to do that. What it says there, Behold, I make all things new. Do you want this to happen in your life? Well, I want to make a prayer for you now. And in this prayer, I'm going to ask God to give you strength. Because you want your life to change. But sometimes perhaps you feel like there is something holding you back. So I'm going to pray for you now. We are going to pray for you now. And I believe that you receive strength inside of you. There where you are right now. All that you need to do after. Leave the house. Use the little strength that you say that you have or faith. Leave your house. Whatever you are doing. And reach here to the church. The moment that you step here. Don't need to worry about anything else. Because God is going to do the rest. We are going to teach to you what you have to do. God's going to help you. I mean, do you believe in that? Do you want that? Well, then let's join ourselves and we are going to make this prayer right now. There where you are, please, if possible, you may close your eyes for us to pray. Set the Lord always before me because He is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. I have set the Lord always before me because He is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. I will not be shaken. I will not be shaken 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 When we pray to God, we can receive strength, courage, faith, peace and anything we sincerely ask for. Take advantage of this moment, close your eyes, and raise your thoughts to God. It's time to pray. My God and Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that you touch the life in the life of these men, women, youth, everybody who is praying with us now in this moment, and that will join this prayer after when they watch this program. My God, go to that encounter, and by faith, I believe that right now you can do and you will do in their life what the doctor can't, what the physician can't, what the specialist can't. That is, to change, to transform the condition of that person. So we pray for them now. And my God, whatever they are, let your power, let your spirit, let your presence touch on them right now. And let all the darkness, pain, sickness, 
against disease, sickle cell, whatever it is, in the name of Jesus Christ, we rebuke in this moment. I rebuke in this moment and I command from this person's ways, from this person's mind, the spirit of addiction, the depression, the, the sadness that it is there, whatever it is that has a negative root, I rebuke you in this moment and I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to get out now in this moment. And right now, my friend, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you are free. Be free that way you are. Be healed that way you are. Be touched by the Spirit of the living God in this very moment. God, He reaches to you that way you are on the other side. It doesn't matter how distant you are watching this. God, He touches you and the miracle happens in this moment. In the name of Jesus, be blessed. I determine your blessing, your family blessing, in the name of Jesus Christ. And if you agree, say, I believe. Amen. Amen. Do you believe? You are blessed. You are blessed. So share this program with everyone that it is suffering. Everyone that you know. All the contacts that you have. And you will do the following. You will invite them to participate in the prayer. And also, they can also write their prayer request. Because again, you know someone who is suffering and you were benefited with this prayer. Share with someone who is in need. And again, get ready for it to give your testimony. Because the word of God, like we read, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And by saying that, He makes all things new in your life. Right now, in this very moment, have faith. Have faith in this word. His word is faithful. It doesn't change. So, if you like to know more information about what we do here at the church, by no means, we are located at 153 North Milan Street, right on the center of Liverpool, pretty much, close to the Westfield Center. If you want to uh, visit our other branches, we do have Blacktown, we have in, in uh, Melbourne, we have branch in uh, Queensland as well. So you can access our website for more information. If you wish to call us, you can do that so on the 0296029837. And again, quicker you are to act, quicker you will see results. May God bless you abundantly. Until next time, have a great day. God bless you. A quick check in the mirror before you leave. This gives you a rough idea on how you look. However, if you really want to see yourself, you will need to look closer. Just like a clear mirror, the Word of God reveals the real state of our souls. Through this, we can see our faults and imperfections. In the same way, this is how we need to prepare for the Lord's Supper. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. This divine instruction does not suggest a mere and complacent introspection, but rather an honest and thorough examination. This is so that one may understand what their true condition is, 
before God. The Lord is calling you to sup with him.